Here's for genuinely free language learning apps that I've personally used for over two years. I am so sick of people saying quote unquote free in the title of their video and then putting Skibrilingo Premium for only $69 per month, which is why I am making this video. I will also provide you with a quick and easy to follow introduction on each of these apps and not a half-assed explanation where I assume you already know half of the information. On top of that, I'm gonna give you tips for learning in general, how to make it not boring and so much more in this short video. I divide applications for learning in two different categories, active study programs and passive study programs. Active study programs are programs that require you to study by having you do some sort of exercise, such would be Duolingo or in real life, a textbook. <laughs> Passive study programs are programs that do not require you to do any of that, you just do it without any work, such would be any video game in your target language or a streaming service with content in your target language. But since I said I'm offering free tools, I will share with you one of the greatest free streaming tools there on in the video. Now let's start with probably one of the best tools out there, Anki. Anki is perhaps one of the greatest tools for memorizing anything, not just learning languages in general, anything. You can memorize anything you desire to memorize as long as you can put it in the format that is within Anki. So how does it work? Well, once you download it for PC, for example, and you run it for the first time, you're gonna meet this little window which shows you a blank screen with nothing but the default deck there. And you might be wondering, wait, where is the study material? Well, you have to take it from somewhere else, alright? It's set as a open source system where people make their own cards and you can make your own cards if you want or you can download it from the internet. You can download it from either Anki web or anywhere that the Anki file can be stored. It could be a Google Drive or a Mega file. It doesn't really matter. Anything's fine as long as you can get this file. But primarily you would use Anki Web. So when you look up anything in Anki Web, let's say Japanese, you're gonna get a bunch of different decks. You download the deck file. When it goes to your download folder, you open that file and it's going to import all of the cards within it into your Anki and you're gonna get a new deck. Then this deck you can use to learn stuff. Furthermore, these are the default settings. You have new cards per day and reviews per day. New cards are cards you have never seen and you're going to see for the first time and reviews are cards that you have seen already and you're going to review them. There is specific criteria that fit a review card. So when do these cards show? It's individual for each single card. The cards that you know better you're gonna see less often than the cars you understand less. So with this system, you do the minimal amount of work while maximizing the amount of information you remember. For example, if I know the word in English bread more than I know the word acquired immunodeficiency syndrome, I'm going to see bread less often than acquired immunodeficiency syndrome, right? Makes sense. So this method relies on the user's ability to memorize. And it doesn't matter how well you memorize, if you use it, eventually you'll remember any information. It doesn't have to be a language, it could be, as I said earlier, medical studies, mathematics, fucking chess, chess maneuvers and shit, you can remember that too. It doesn't really matter as long as you can fit it in the card format, being a question and an answer. These are the basics and you should probably like investigate it a little bit more because I cannot fit that much info or maybe I will make a video in the future about how to use Anki in more detail. If I do, there is gonna be like this uh, brown bar above me that is going to appear. If you don't see it, I probably didn't make it yet. Moving on, now this category is a mixture of active study programs and passive study programs because it has a wide range of usages and it could be used either way. And that is of course YouTube. 
Now you can use YouTube to learn editing in general, but a lot of people don't see it as a language learning resource. Well, you totally should because there is amazing videos that may teach you grammar or vocabulary or how to write in Chinese for example. But it can also be used for immersion, which is passive studying. So you can be watching Kurt Kazakh Japanese YouTube channel, which I do, and it's very interesting, but it serves the purpose of both, so it's a very good tool. How do you find the information you need? Well, I simply do the following if I need something, alright? I go to YouTube and I look up target language name, language lessons, for example Japanese, and I get this guy, and I watch his videos in a very nicely put playlist that I can use to refer in my notes so that it's easier for me to use and it's very convenient too you can watch it on almost any device like i don't need to explain youtube to you you're watching it right now probably on your toilet or in your bed alone again now moving on god forgive me i am going to gain 300 pounds for saying this discord Now, how can you use that to actually study? Well, it's quite simple, my friend. There is Discord servers dedicated for language exchange, which allows you to interact with other learners and native speakers of your target language, which gives you the best opportunity for practice. Now you go to the Discord website, you download Discord, you run it, you make an account, and then you start looking through this website called Discord. It's very useful because it has a lot of different categories, which allows you to choose a target language you have as a category or a tag, and you're gonna get a bunch of servers that are related to that language exchange. After that, you're free to do as you please, as long as you follow the rules and guidelines of Discord, of course. And that's really pretty much it for Discord. Now let's move on to what I promised you. The streaming service I've been teasing this entire video. This streaming service is called Stremio. No way this shit is so good. Not only are you learning useful shit, when I subscribed to Lingobald my cock grew by 5 inches. It allows you to watch anything you want for free, no ads whatsoever. You just download it from this website, you run it, after that you make an account, you do some arrangements with the settings, and you're good to go, you can watch anything you want. And if you have a Netflix account, or a HBO or whatever account you have, you can link it to that, so that you can watch it in one place if you already have subscriptions, even though you don't need them. Now are you watching it and all, it's all cool and stuff, but where are the subtitles? Well, if you look at this little button in the bottom right corner, you're going to find a bunch of inbred subtitles, and if you have a subtitle file, you can drag and drop this file onto the player, and it's going to play these subtitles. You press G and H to shift the timing of the subtitles backward or forward, and then you're good to go. Now I only know how to download Japanese subtitles is through this website called Kitsuneku, but I don't know about other languages. However, I'm gonna show you how to find anything, and I mean anything, anything that you need when it comes to language learning or pretty much finding anything in general. So you go to Google and you search up, insert your problem, space, Reddit. You're going to see a post from some Reddit dudes from 6 years ago who had the exact same problem as you and the top comment is probably the solution to that problem. Now this works 8 out of 10 times, but it's a very good percentage, not gonna lie. Oh wait, that makes it 5. Well I guess this was a little bonus for me then. If you found this video helpful, subscribe. And if you liked it, press the like button. If you don't like it, Press the dislike button twice so that I know you mean it. Alright, see ya.